In Times Long Ago by James P. Meyer From Canvas to Chicken Wire, Pearl's Story During the Great Depression of 1932, we lived with my parents. My husband worked for a wealthy man named Astor Blavelt. One day, Blavelt said to my husband, Truly, see this parcel of land? I'll give you this land for fifty dollars. Truy looked at him in disbelief and replied, I don't have fifty dollars. Blavelt thought about this for a while and came out and said, Okay, okay, just give me a dollar down. At this, Truy felt real bad because he didn't have a dollar. His brother, seeing Truy's dismay, exclaimed, I'll give you ten dollars that I have. Well, we became landowners for little or no money right then and there. We always thought it was a steal. The plot of land was about 50 by 150 feet. There were no buildings on it, and we had no money to build anything. Seeing this, one of Truy's friends gave us a camping tent to live in and a camp stove. So Truy, our two children, and I moved in. One day, Truy was working at raking leaves for 15 cents an hour. It was under the WPA program that he got the job. The owner of the house where he was raking leaves came out and pointed to an old rotted out chicken house and said, I wish I could get rid of that chicken house. It's an eyesore. Instantly, Truy replied, I'll take it off your hands. The owner agreed and Truy hired someone to move it to our lot. It was all broken down, so we left it where the movers put it. I was cooking vegetables on our camp stove one day when I had to leave the tent for just a few minutes. When I got back, the fire had gone out on the burner, and without thinking, I struck a match to light it, and kablooey, everything exploded in my face. I wasn't really hurt, just singed, but the tent instantly started to melt all around us. I grabbed the kids, and we tried to get out as best we could. The tent was literally melting around us. We finally got out and stood looking at the mess. Whatever we had was gone, and we had nowhere to live. The people of our church heard about our misfortune, and they responded with the greatest of love. The men took the chicken house and knocked away the decay, and with donated wood built a new siding for the coop. Tar paper was used for the siding on the outside, and we lined the inside with packing box plywood. They put the chicken house on a cement foundation and completed the job. The women brought food and shared it with everyone. It was a good time and a great blessing from God. We moved in with our three children. Our youngest had just been born. We had some adjusting to do, but after all, we just moved in from a tent. We lived like this in the chicken house for two years before our fourth child arrived. Then they brought home some railroad ties and truly expanded our coop six feet. I got a larger kitchen out of the deal, and our new cupboards were made out of casket boxes. We still had a space problem. If someone came to visit, we had to get up from the kitchen table and move it to let them in. We had to put up three tiered bunk beds in the living room for three of our kids, and the fourth child slept on a straw tick. The only luxury I had was a sewing machine, which I used to make all my four kids' clothing. It is something to think back on those days. I don't know where we'd have been had not the church come to our rescue. We were well cared for. I wonder. I wonder what Truy thought when he was offered the land. I wonder how he felt when his brother came up with the money. I wonder how Pearl really felt about their living conditions. I wonder why they didn't stay with their parents. I wonder what it is like to lose everything you have. I wonder what made the church members respond so well. I wonder how Truy and Pearl felt when others responded generously to their needs. Family Room Reflections The guest was teaching and listening to the people in the house of a gracious host.
Then at first only small flecks fell on him and those around him. Then larger and larger debris came down on all their heads. Looking up and shielding their eyes from the fragments, they saw several men hacking a big hole in the thatched roof. With ropes, they lowered a paralyzed man on a pallet to Jesus. They called from above, Save this man! He is our friend! And Jesus said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. I say to you, take up your mat and go home. When the friend got up, they were all amazed. Mark 2, 3-12 through 12. Recollections People will do what they have to do. They will either give or they will take. Blavelt, seeing the need of his neighbor and workmen, offered to sell the land for a cheap price. Truly, seeing a wonderful opportunity unfold before him, knew that it was beyond his grasp. The paralyzed man's friends saw a wonderful opportunity to save his life. It seemed impossible to get their dying friend into the house where Jesus was. They used their imaginations and created a hole in the roof. Truy's brother, seeing the look of great joy turned suddenly to despair, took liberty with Truy's pride. He offered to pay for him, even ten times the amount of the down payment. Both Truy and the paralyzed man received a gift, where are you in these stories? What is your story? Storyteller Kathy Meyer Narrator Jim Meyer All Materials Copyright Thule Press 2003 For more information about Jim's presentations and workshops for your setting, contact Jim Meyer, The History of Our Lives, Phone and voicemail, 651-330-4692. Steeplechaser at Juno.com.